So I don't really do this. I don't, I'm not much of a, a streamer. I just stream every once in a while and I'm not much of a content creator or anything, but I stumbled on this video um, called Are MMOs Actually RPGs Anymore? by a guy named uh, Ember Arcade. Never heard of him before. Uh, this is the first video that I've ever seen of him. Seems like a cool dude. I got like halfway through watching the video and I thought, would be cool to react to this. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, I think I, not all, oh, well, halfway through, I think I probably disagree with it or maybe not disagree is the right word, but we'll find out. Let's react and see how it feels. Let me take you back in time. During the summer of 2021, while World of Warcraft players who were disillusioned with Shadowlands began turning their attention to Final Fantasy XIV, Jesse Cox published a video titled 15 Years of WoW vs. One Year of FF14. Everyone with a camera and a microphone rushed to react to the video, insisting on offering their two cents. It was the centerpiece of the MMO community's interest for the better part of two or three hours. It's a great- Absolutely true. I reacted to it. I've been a fan of Jesse for like a decade. Um, great video. Great video for sure, but Jesse said something in that video that inspired unanimous applause, but that I disagree with. World of Warcraft is an MMORPG, while Final Fantasy XIV is an RPG MMO. This sentiment was clever enough to become gospel truth in the MMO space on YouTube. As a matter of fact, I've seen this line repeated in the comments of my own videos over and over again. While I understand what Jesse Cox was trying to communicate, I do not believe that Final Fantasy XIV qualifies as an RPG relative to the MMO genre. Quite what I think um jesse meant by that was he he grew up playing final fantasy games just like i did uh and the focus on at least m most of your first experience playing final fantasy 14 is it's a story game uh it's a story game just like final fantasy 7 is it's a story game just like final fantasy 6 or 10 or whatever you're going to be you know playing through a, a long text-driven narrative. And by, you know, putting it first, it just means it's going to emphasize that a little bit more than the MMO portion of it. Frankly, I'd argue that it's closer to a visual novel, but we'll get into the details later. Listen, I understand. I love that uh, description, it being closer to a visual novel. Um, not, to say, not necessarily saying that that's a bad thing, of course. Uh, I think... There's a really good argument for that, and I think it's a really interesting discussion. Uh, that's why I wanted to react to this video. I understand that you're already preparing to disagree with me vehemently and to dislike my video into another dimension, but I implore you to hear me out. The definition of what constitutes an RPG has become more difficult to define in the last decade. Gameplay features that we would typically associate with RPGs, such as a leveling framework and equipment with variable strengths, can be found in third-person action titles like God of War or Assassin's Creed or Spider-Man. The term RPG has been diluted beyond recognition, so how would we go about defining it? Today's video, therefore, is about defining RPGs as it relates to MMOs. I've gone ahead and compiled a series of characteristics that I believe are required in order for a game to qualify as an RPG. I'll explain to you. So right from the get-go, we know that this video is going to be about semantics. So we already know that it doesn't matter, but I actually really like discussions like this. Um, that being said, uh, I feel like trying to pin down one definition of an RPG like, is there really any point at this at this point of trying to do so? Um, I define it very, very loosely as in like any game where you're playing a role, uh, which you could argue is almost any game, really. But uh, we'll get into that more later, I think what those are and why I don't think that 14 deserves the title of RPG MMO that the community has been happy to grant it. A few things before we get to that discussion, however. First of all, this is just an opinion piece. It is highly likely that you'll disagree with me by the end of the video, no matter how succinctly or reasonably I present my case. That's okay. We're here to have fun and talk about a genre that we love. Second, and that's why I'm reacting to this, because I actually really like this kind of video. This guy seems like a really cool dude. Um, I think just from what I've watched already, I, uh, Probably going to disagree with most things. Of all, you'll only get my opinion at the end of the video. In order to rope down the definition of an RPG as it relates to the MMO genre, I've elicited the help of a couple of MMO content creators to offer me their own definitions. Perhaps as a collaborative effort, we can find a true definition and put this issue firmly to rest, but probably not. Final order of business, let's take 10 seconds to thank today's sponsor, me. Here's the pitch. 
all of my videos two days early and ad-free for only $1 a month on Patreon. Go check it out. Now, for our first submission, I'd like to introduce you to Redbeard Flynn, a content creator who I've grown to enjoy quite a lot in recent months. I'll let him take it away. Is his name really Redbeard Flynn? Like, Redbeard is included in that? Because that's an amazing name, and I love it. Oh, cool. It's yet another chance for anyone who really likes Star Wars The Old Republic or Final Fantasy XIV to have a reason not to like me. It's nice to meet you all. My name is Redbeard Flynn, and I started making content on MMOs about three years ago, and I've been playing them long enough to have really crippling knee pain and back pain. Ember's Accurate. Arcade asked me to answer a question that will certainly not cause any terse discussion at all, because that's not something the MMORPG like landscape is known for at all, is it? No, we're what very reasonable. What does the RPG part of an MMORPG mean? Well, shit, Embers, <laughs> when I tried to discuss this with my friends, we got into such a, a talking circle about it, just talking about what RPG means, that we literally said that Pong was an RPG because the paddle grows, it's progression. So I, I did get this far, you know, when I was watching it earlier. Uh, Pong being an RPG with an incredibly loose definition. Sure, your 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 role is your your the player playing Pong, right? Um, I kind of uh, I think where I'm going to have an issue is what he already mentioned is progression. I don't necessarily think progression is required for something to be an RPG. That's just to say it's difficult to say because there's a lot of gray areas around these descriptions, and it really becomes a bit of personal personal taste in some ways. And I think so, why, the, why not? Let's Here's my bullshit opinion on the thing. RPG elements in an MMO are inextricably tied to the massively part for me. That means things like personal story and world impact kind of go out the window. I'm not looking for Baldur's Gate 3 level interactions and consequences. That shifts more towards a world narrative, something we'll get to here in a moment. The RPG elements that are the most important for me are tied to function and mechanics instead. Grow so I think I, I hear what he's saying, but I just I just don't see why that would be the case. It's it's typical that there's um growth and functional mechanics in RPGs because that's kind of how you know the 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 genre of RPG has has been for a very long time. Um, but I don't think it has to be. It's just it's just what is normal in the genre. I don't think it defines the genre. Growth of your character, leveling up, gaining power, getting new items, essentially advancement. I think it is one of the most important parts of an MMORPG, character progression. It's also why I've struggled to conceptualize horizontal progression systems because they break from the tradition of vertical progression, which isn't just a part of MMORPGs and RPGs, but even tabletop RPGs as well. It doesn't preclude the inclusion of horizontal progression, just that the absence of the vertical is kind of a non-starter for me. I, I just don't see that. Um... And I think the way he's using the term progression is kind of loaded in that you can progress without there being any actual progression on your character. Um, since we're talking about Final Fantasy XIV in this video, and that's my favorite game, um, I've been Biss for a long time now. Uh, and I've still progressed in the game um, because there's goals that I have in the game that I want to that I want to do. You know, like uh, a few months ago, I beat DSR. Um, there's no power rewards <laughs> for beating DSR. Uh, you can say I progressed my character because I got the achievement, but. I'm still progressing. I, f I still feel like I'm progressing because one, I'm getting more comfortable with the fight and I've, I've cleared it like five times now. Um, and uh, I, I like one of my favorite things to do is to go into party finder and find clear for ones. I've, I've not done a single totem group for DSR. I only join clear for ones because it feels better to me to help other people get their clear. 
And for me, that sounds like progression, even though my character isn't progressing, but I feel like I'm progressing in um, helping other people get their clears. So I, the way that he's using the word progression, I feel like is very loaded. Um, I don't think it, I don't think there's just one way to progress, especially in an MMO where the social aspect is such a huge deal. I also really need the character customization part to be personal. I That's think fine. it's even more important in an MMO than in an RPG. In an MMO, you are entering a world, or as EverQuest and other MMOs have said, a living, breathing world. If I'm entering the world as Geralt of Rivia 001, right next to Geralt of Rivia 003, 002, and 0069, well then shit, that immersion is kind of broken for me. I I'm no I am no longer the character that I'm creating. There's there's no role for me to play. There is a meta role to play. Uh I don't really agree with this either. <laughs> I, I know it seems like I'm disagreeing with every single thing in the video. That's not that's not my intention, but it's I just I, I hear what they're saying and I understand what they're saying and I see their perspective and there's nothing wrong with their perspective. I just I just don't agree with it. Um, I think you can have uh, assigned roles in a game and it still be an RPG. You know, if I'm playing Final Fantasy VII, um, most of the game you're controlling Cloud. Uh, you're not gonna you're not going to uh, customize what Cloud looks like. Uh, at that point, you're you're playing the role in in, in you're playing the role of Cloud, and you do the things that Cloud does, um, and the RPG aspect of that is you're playing the role of Cloud. Um, not every it doesn't have you don't have to have a personalized role for it to be a role playing game. Uh, the role can be assigned, and you can play the role that is given to you. So we've got character customization and character like advancement as the, the two most important things for me in an MMO for the RPG side of it. But there's one last thing that I think is important. And this is kind of what I was getting at in the beginning when I was talking about people that really like Final Fantasy XIV and Star Wars Old Republic getting mad at me. Because we're gonna talk about single player stories and world narratives. RPGs have a story, one where you are usually at the center. In an MMO, we've seen this in various ways. Games that center you and ask you to forget that other players are also being centered in their own story. Essentially, an RPG within the MMO, like Elder Scrolls Online, Star Wars or Republic, Final Fantasy XIV, etc. These games require a sort of cognitive dissonance as you load out of your emotional instance into a horde of other people still wiping their tears away from their own emotional instance. Yeah, yeah, at that point, you know that it's a game. Um, and other people are experiencing the same game in their own way, of course. Uh, I get that. I don't see how it's a problem, though. And probably uh -huh. a couple of people trolling around at the same time. It just kind of being annoying as people do in MMOs. And sorry, Embers, this opinion may contrast specifically with your audience. I personally prefer MMOs that take the focus away from you and move it towards the world story, like EverQuest, Star Wars Galaxies, Ultima Online. I'm just, I, I'm quite literally just saying old, old as hell MMOs. So I guess perhaps somewhere in between World of Warcraft, because it's kind of depending on where you're at. World of Warcraft is old too. That's 2004. I'm just old. There's a simple way to put this though. In an RPG, a solo RPG, I expect to influence the world. In an MMO RPG, I expect the world to influence me. Cheers, Embers. Thank you so much. MMO RPG, I expect the world to influence me. I kind of see where he's coming from because so in an MMORPG, the community is such a, a, a powerful thing, or so I, I guess it can be such a powerful thing. Um, so the, the world as the community can impact you and 
I don't know. Uh, I've been impacted by the the world in single player games too. I I guess I I don't really see the point that he's trying to make. Um, or, or how that has any difference for putting this together. I really appreciate it. And I am honored and humbled to be a part of this. Thank you again so, so much. Ember's quality is top notch. So thank you for letting me sully it just a little bit with my little snippet here. Thank you all very much. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Shout out to Redbeard Flynn for putting in way more effort than I expected with this little project. There's a lot to talk about here, so let's start at the top. The two key words that Flynn presented as a framework were function and mechanics, or as he put it, character progression. Most of you watching this and Flynn himself might be surprised to find that I agree wholeheartedly with the notion that Final Fantasy XIV barely qualifies as an RPG. Even within the confines of the Final Fantasy XIV franchise, there are entries with stronger examples of RPG elements at play. While I just don't... I just don't see why they think that. Uh, so like, as a con, as a contrasting example, he showed, uh, Final Fantasy X, right? And the character progression in Final Fantasy X is the sphere grid, um, which gives you, well, gives you the illusion of choice in the beginning until you can really fill it out. Um, and then it gives you a choice of different ways that you can, uh, different directions you can go into the sphere grid so different characters could do things that they might not be meant to do um for one there is progression in final fantasy 14 um you you start at level one you end at level what's the max now 90 uh you gain new skills you gain new powers um you can get better gear um most people don't get this because most people don't do savage rating. So there is a progression in it. Um, it's not super deep progression because each class is so standardized, right? Like uh, at max level, if you're looking at the highest high level gear, there's really only two options for each slot, right? Yeah, there's only two options for each slot. There's the raid slot and then there's the tome slot. Um, still progression <laughs> uh and again i don't define rpgs by having vertical progression anyway i just i feel like it's it that's just become so common within the genre that people think it is the genre and i don't think that that's true 14 technically includes character progression. There are levels, pieces of equipment yeah. with variable strengths, material slots to further customize that equipment, and so on. It does so with a degree of low commitment and low gameplay feedback. Therein lies, in my opinion, another layer to what Flynn puts forward in his definition of RPG. Vertical progression is what makes a role-playing game more than simply role-playing in a game. In addition, that vertical progression must... Vertical progression? Does that? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Levels, pieces of equipment with variable strengths, material slots to further customize the equipment, again. and so on. It does so with a degree of low commitment and low gameplay feedback. Therein lies in the the progression in Final Fantasy isn't about gear, and that's a huge difference in a lot of other MMOs. The progression in Final Fantasy is how far you get into the encounters. Um. Having a high item level is not the goal. The goal is you're going to have a high item level to help you get farther into the fights. The progression is beating the fights. The progression isn't gaining more power. In my opinion, another layer to what Flynn puts forward in his definition of RPG. Let's do this again. Vertical progression is what makes a, Vertical progression a role-playing game. Is what makes a role-playing game. I just disagree. I just hard disagree. More than simply role-playing in a game. In addition, that vertical progression must require some commitment from the player to acquire, which is- I also just disagree. I just- I just don't see that as required. Like, I just- I just don't see the- where the logic leads you to that is then expressed afterwards via gameplay feedback if these two elements aren't present then they cannot qualify in my opinion at least let me give you an example of this concept while my roster isn't exactly fantastic in lost ark i have this glavier who i play as an alt i recently managed to score some of her best level 5 tripods along with completing her basic entropy set and getting some of the best runes to augment her abilities this character is still woefully behind but i made progress with her this week that i can visibly notice during gameplay this is what a role-playing game should look like. Con so you, 
so I don't play Lost Ark. I, I tried to play it and it just didn't interest me. Um, but what I got from that was you have an alt in Lost Ark that became more powerful. So what? Like you're saying that that's required for it to be an RPG. And I, and I just, I just don't see why you think that. Um, again, uh, vertical character progression in, in character power is common, incredibly common in the RPG genre, but I don't think it is the genre. Conversely, I've been working on a huge video on Final Fantasy XIV's nightlife. You know, the bars and clubs and hidden places which play host to behaviors which will go unspoken. Here's a quick preview. None of these people are playing a role-playing game. They're listening to a self-described DJ on Twitch who's just broadcasting a playlist on Spotify while they watch their characters perform an animation loop. They are role-playing in a game. I'm not into the whole uh, nightlife scene uh, <laughs> in Final Fantasy. That's just, It's not something that I'm interested in. Um, I don't know. He, uh, This guy... Um, Ember Arcade, he seems like a cool guy. That last little snippet from that video that he's doing sounds kind of dismissive. Uh, I'm not into that scene of Final Fantasy, but I'm not going to... I don't know. Uh, it, it seemed a little harsh uh, to describe things that way. Uh, I don't know anything about the DJs, but I don't know. Like, it, it, it just... That seemed a little mean <laughs> to me. See the difference? Now, before we go further, let's hear from our second guest, Sawman UK, who has a different take altogether. Ah, uh, yes. The age-old question of how would one define a RPG? Well, let's break it down, shall we? Is he even Asmin mug? <laughs> That's really funny. First, we have the letter R, which stands for roll. And then we have P as in playing and then of course g as in i don't know who this guy is but i love him game but how does this relate to the mmo rpg genre you might be wondering well the simple answer is this it doesn't well i mean it kind of does an rpg for me is a game where you assume the role of and this is why this whole topic, like, even though I'm super interested in it and I love talking about stuff like this and I love this video, um, even if I disagree with almost everything in it, uh, everyone is always saying, oh, well, an RPG to me. And and you would be right by saying that, because at the end of the day, all of this really is just semantics. The main character, this is about you and your journey. Typically, there'll be some sort of skill tree or you will level up. But most importantly, there's an immersive story. So if we whack on MMO in front of RPG, we're just talking about doing this in a multiplayer setting. Although technically in this day and age, RPG can refer to many games. For example, GTA 5 Online is a massively multiplayer online game. You assume the role of a criminal in a story arc and there's progression. So therefore, is GTA 5 a MMO RPG? A lot of you be laughing and saying, of course not. But it does. I don't see why it wouldn't be does meet all the criteria. So, an MMORPG in this day and age is kind of watered down. RPG can refer to so many different things that at this point it's just an acronym to describe a big multiplayer game. But if you had to push me for an answer, it just means there's a main story quest that you can follow whilst being massively multiplayer and online. So, so this guy's saying that in order for it to be an RPG, there has to be a main story quest. And I'm I'm making some assumptions that he means main story quest is like a main story that everyone is going to have basically the same kind of experience. You know, everyone playing Final Fantasy VII is going to have the same kind of experience in regards to the main story, even if they do different things along the way and use different characters and yada yada. Um, I know I'm I'm coming off as really contrarian uh, in this react, but. I don't think I agree with that either. <laughs> I think my definition is just so loose um, that like you can have a role playing game without well, well, where basically you create almost all of the story. 
Anyway, well, let's continue. Maybe I don't agree, disagree. Bowman brings up something interesting here, which is that the RPG aspect of an MMO means that there is a main story quest, which is experienced by a collective player base in a multiplayer environment. Flynn was more keen on function and mechanics, but Sawman's argument that a narrative force is required to fulfill the definition of an RPG in an MMO setting is actually essential to parse out which games do or do not qualify as MMORPGs. For example, we could look at Call of Duty and give it the RPG label, couldn't we? There's character customization and vertical progression, all of which are expressed in your moment to moment gameplay and experienced in a massively multiplayer environment. The different I actually would be okay with that. No, like even though it doesn't have like a a, a big story like you know a Final Fantasy game would be, um the story can be the story that you make and you're playing a role in the story. So I think with that loose definition I would be okay with that. The differentiator here is that unlike the Elder Scrolls Online, Lost Ark, World of Warcraft, or Final Fantasy XIV, among many others, there is no unifying narrative throughline which is experienced by the player base. This is a compelling argument since even the most function-focused MMOs like Lost Ark still spend extensive resources on narrative presentation. The world must be a character and it has to offer some semblance of narrative context to your gameplay. Otherwise, it can't qualify as an RPG even if the quality of that narrative is almost always terrible World of Warcraft. It's always terrible. Okay, it's almost always terrible. The main story in WoW is always terrible. There's some side stories in there that are, that are pretty fun. Uh, but time and time again, <laughs> the main story is just so bad. Oh my goodness. Now it's my turn. How do I define RPG in relation to MMOs? Go for Remember it. Remember that Jesse Cox video that I mentioned at the start? The one that coined and popularized the term RPG MMO to describe Final Fantasy XIV? While I don't think that the term accurately represents XIV, I do like it as a template for defining the genre as a whole. I can't say whether or not the order of the letters in the acronym MMORPG suggests a hierarchy of importance, but if it does, then it should be structured as RPG MMO instead. Because I think that the RPG section is more important than the MMO section. Like okay. Flynn argued, Continue. in order for a game to be an RPG in this genre, then it should have a primary focus on a perpetual feedback loop, which converts time and investment into proportionately rewarding gameplay. Okay, hold on. An RPG should have a primary focus on a perpetual feedback loop. Primary focus on a perpetual feedback loop, which converts time and investment into proportionately rewarding gameplay. So in other words, the game should be fun. <laughs> An RPG should be fun. <laughs> so, yes, a, a, a game should be fun. <laughs> That's kind of the point of a game, right? Um, or it could you be bad? The game could also be bad. <laughs> If I had to boil down my definition into a single sentence, then that's what it would be. In this way, Final Fantasy XIV fails completely, while a game like Lost Ark, despite its bad reputation, more closely fits the bill. The degree. I just disagree. Um, let's go back to that definition really, really, really quick. RPG should have primary focus on perpetual feedback loop, which converts time investment into proportionately rewarding gameplay. And then he says that Final Fantasy XIV doesn't have that. It, it does. <laughs> uh, you know how many times I've pulled Dragon Song Reprise? Do you know how many times I've pulled every savage fight in the game? Uh, well, not in the game, but this expansion. Um, and I have fun doing it every single time. It's, it's, a, it's a perpetual feedback loop. Uh, and time gives me practice, which gets me better at it. And when I get better at it, it's rewarding gameplay because eventually I get so good at it that I beat it. Um, I just, I just wholeheartedly disagree. This just seems, it just seems wrong. Like <laughs> the, 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 in order for a game to be an RP, the, uh, the, 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 conclusion that he's making i just i just don't see it pg in this genre then it should have a primary focus on a perpetual feedback loop which converts time and investment into proportionately rewarding gameplay if i had to boil down my definition into a single sentence then that's what it would be in this way final fantasy 14 fails completely while a game like lost ark despite its bad reputation more closely fits the bill the degree to which my time investment in 14 can be converted into progression is infinitesimal compared to the same measurement in lost ark Again, they're, they're defining progression as uh, character power. And I think that is a narrow way to define progression. Because even though my character isn't getting more powerful in Final Fantasy XIV on a day-by-day -day basis, uh, I still feel like I'm making progression. 
uh, because I'm progressing doing the things that I want to do in the game. I'm progressing with my projects. I'm progressing in the Savage fight. I'm progressing in um, Relic Grinds. I'm progressing with learning uh, another ultimate. It's it, it just seems like a narrow way to view it to me. Of course, in a similar vein to Sawman's definition, that feedback loop must be enshrined within a narrative framework which inspires intrinsic motivation to play the game. This and and again, I I think this whole thing is just going up to semantics, you know. Um, and at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. But this hold on, let's Final Fantasy fourteen. We'll, we'll we'll finish the video, then I'll have some some final thoughts. King shines. The game's story gives the player a powerful why to every activity, which is crucial in an RPG. Otherwise, these games would be menu surfers for the purpose of function fulfillment. You might as well go play Cookie Clicker. All of this, of course, must be contained within a persistent digital ecosystem that supports a player presence, which dwarfs the average. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. My, my eyes just kind of glazed over for a second. Uh, the RPG must be contained within a persistent digital ecosystem that supports a player presence, which dwarfs the average. <sighs> must contain a persistent digital ecosystem that supports a player. I'm not sure where he's getting at. Supports a player presence, which dwarfs the average. While Genshin Impact, for example, has missed. Is that just the, the other players that he's talking about? There, there should be other players around? Millions of concurrent players worldwide and boast many of the same features as your run-of-the-mill MMO. It cannot support more players in one space than the average online game can. I'd wager that for most online games, that range sits somewhere between 8 to 16 players. An MMORPG should be able to host many more than that. So, there you have it. Weeks ago, I began... Yeah, there should be other players in, in an online game, which there are. <laughs> to wonder whether or not MMOs were RPGs anymore. Somehow that brought me here, offering some contention to the popular dogma of Final Fantasy XIV being a supposed RPG MMO, and even asking for help to figure out what RPG even means. A humongous shout out to Redbeard Flynn and Sawman UK for taking the time to be a part of this project. I'll link their channels in the description, please show them all the love you can muster. If you disagree with any of the perspectives that we put forward, then please leave a comment below. I read them all, I respond to most, and I love a good debate. Feel free to leave your feedback in the form of a like or a dislike. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more MMORPG content. Remember, you can get all of my videos two days early. All right. Um, so yeah, as I alluded to in the video, I disagree with almost every take <laughs> in this video. And um, respectfully, you know, I don't, I don't think it matters. I think all of this is mostly semantics. Um, but I love these kind of uh, kind of thought provoking videos. This was a great video. Uh, I've never heard of uh, Ember's Arcade before, but maybe I'll take a look at his other videos. But my my thoughts on this topic is um, it's all semantics. It's all what anyone feels like because at the end of the day, whether something is categorized as an RPG or an MMO or an MMO RPG or an RPG MMO doesn't matter because they're they're genres and they're there but they're also not. Um, when I made the switch from WoW to Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy did things so differently, and I was a WoW player for so long that there were things that honestly surprised me that they did that I didn't think was allowed. Um, the Without any spoilers, of course, the ending of A Realm Reborn going into Heaven's Ward, uh, what, the, 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 the big cut scene, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil it. Um, patch 2.55, I don't know. People who played the game know what I'm talking about. After coming from WoW, I thought that they were rules. And after that cutscene, I realized there are no rules. Just because you label a game something or put a or have an expectation that a game is in a certain genre doesn't mean that you need to follow a template. Final Fantasy XIV doesn't have a skill tree like every other <laughs> MMO, right? Um, Final Fantasy XIV will lock people in a cutscene for 30 minutes. Um, most MMOs are afraid to do that. Uh, time and time again, Final Fantasy XIV showed me that there are no rules 
Uh, your definitions don't matter. Uh, the only thing that matters is, is it a good game? Um, and at the end of the day, I don't think anyone really cares whether a particular game is an RPG or an MMO. They care if it's fun. Uh, that That's really all that they care about. Uh, no one is going to be like, well, I only play MMORPGs. And then, you know, someone will convince them, oh, you're whatever MMO isn't really an RPG MMO. Uh, well, then I'm just going to quit the game, right? No, because you're going to have fun with the game regardless of what people call it. Um, I think it's a really cool discussion, though, even though I disagree with just about everything. Uh, and I don't normally do this kind of content, but I, I really enjoyed this video. Uh, so I wanted to give it a shot. Tell me what you think. I hope Ember, on the very off chance, because I have a, don't really post anything, I hope Ember sees my video. Uh, that would be cool. Have a good one.